These are my new actuators and they're about to flap for the hundred million time. This may look like a simple solution, but it actually was a very difficult engineering challenge to pull off because the copper in the flap is flexing 50 times per second. So in this video, I will be talking about the failures I have encountered during testing my solution to these problems. And I'm also going to talk about the applications for this new actuator. If you're interested in purchasing this flap, it's now available on my website. This research was only made possible with the help of Way, who manufactured all the samples and Altum Designer, which is the CAD software that makes designing circuits like this so much easier. If you want to try it out for free, you can just click the link in the description and you can also get 25% off any purchase license. Now this experiment got started with me trying to make the actuator flap faster because I wanted to improve the refresh rate of my flexible POV display. The coil here is like a flap, so what we need to do is lower its drag. And the only things that I could do is either put a hole in the coil or make the arms more flexible. The smaller the arm with the more flexible it gets. So to test this I built this jig with magnets on each side so that I could benchmark them. And many flaps later I came to the conclusion that the 2.6 millimeter width was the fastest. I was a little surprised because the speed started dropping for narrower arms and I also noticed a similar behavior when trying to make the arms thinner by removing the solder mask. This is no solder mask sample. Testing in 3, 2, 1. Anything above 12 Hz made it wiggle. The single layer of Captain also made it super fragile, so it was kind of useless. Now the main advantage of having a hole on the coil is that it will have less turns, so it will be less powerful. But since it has less drag, it still managed to reach 15 Hz, and this was with 3.6 mm arm width. So the next obvious step was to combine the 2.6 mm arm with the hollow coil, which would have created a more efficient flap. But it didn't work because there wasn't any visible change between the normal coil and the hollow coil. What did improve it is this patterned arm. These yellow regions are thinner because they don't include a solder mask, so it made it much more bendy. Here's when I start thinking about durability. My first test was overpowering the coil for two straight weeks. At the time, I had just finished the flexible heater project, so I was very concerned that my actuator would have the same damages. I had a long discussion with this with PCB Ways manufacturing experts, and they have informed me that the black coverlay should sustain higher temperatures when compared to the yellow coverlay. The important thing is that they don't exceed 100 degrees. And in fact, after two weeks, the only damage that I could see was that the silk screen started turning into this yellowish color. This was an easy fix because all I had to do was remove the Flexar logo from the hot region. Next, I really wanted to understand what is the breaking point of the flaps. I started by 3D printing this mount which could hold 8 actuators. And I powered them on and left them running at 8.5 Hz. After a week of continuous flapping, I started noticing that some of them started dying. The damage was clearly being made to the copper in the arm. I decided to test more samples and compare them with my original Flexar flap design. This had a wider arm with wider copper, so its bend angle was much smaller. I'm basically undoing the first three minutes of this video, <laughs> sorry for that. This time I left the test running for more than three weeks and my wider arm theory worked because four out of eight survived, but I still had to figure out why half of them were dead. The first fix that I could do is increasing the width of the copper. At this point, I no longer cared about the bend angle. I just wanted my actuator to be robust and reliable and I showed the set setup was variation, the coil and the magnet were not being aligned the same way. So at the time this was my theory to why some actuators were dying before others. I needed to treat the magnet not as something separate but part of the system. So I came up with the idea of using this foldable magnet holder. This had a plastic stiffener on both sides and two pieces of adhesive tape to prevent it from unfolding and holding the magnet. The solution worked pretty well, but the plastic stiffeners were not that rigid. The magnet was like on a trampoline, which means that energy was being lost. 
So I remanufactured the PCBs and this time around I used aluminum stiffeners. These were much more robust which means that I could restart the durability test. I tested 20 samples running at 16 Hz. This means that after one month each sample made more than 8 million flaps in both polarities. Almost all of them survive except for one. Another one got its magnet deattached so I guess it was too close to the other sample but the rest of the PCBs were still flapping. However I noticed two issues that happened because of the top stiffener. This deformed some of the flex arms and the edge also managed to cut into the solder mask. As disappointing as it sounds it forced me to think about new solutions for these failures. To avoid the cuts I decided to make the magnet holder slightly larger than the flap. As an extra layer of protection I also added a very thin plastic stiffener on the bottom side of the coil to act as a cover. I tested with and without this cover and it didn't have any effect on the bending angle. For these new samples I decided to use a larger 10 mm diameter flat magnet which stayed flush with the aluminum stiffener. It also provided a larger contact area with the adhesive so it's more difficult for the magnet to get disconnected. As you can see this new PCB also included two armed samples. These all have the same features I have just mentioned but it should also make the flapping more stable because the one coil arms are being supported from just one point which I think can degrade the coil faster because of unwanted vibrations on the roll axis. Now these two arm samples are obviously more chunky when compared to this one arm design. A small problem I noticed is that for very low speeds the longer arm was doing a little twist on the coil. I'm not 100% sure to why this is happening but I guess it has to do with the shape of the coil's magnetic field. The 35 mm length sample was not doing this so I decided to stick with it. So I mounted 40 samples to see how the arms compare. These were running at 16 hertz and after two weeks I paused the test because two samples of the one arm design were dead. When stopping the test I also noticed that the unpowered one arm design were staying in a deformed position. This was much less visible with the two arm design and there were no other visible damages on this actuator so I decided to save some power and eliminate the one arm samples. Since the two armed actuator were just 35 mm, they could also handle higher speed, so I increased the frequency to 25 Hz and continued the test for more than two weeks. And this time it actually worked. In total, each actuator made more than 100 million flaps, and 0 out of 20 failed. This time I couldn't see any scratches on the bottom side of the coil, on none of the samples, even on those that didn't have a plastic cover, but I still added the cover for the final version. This is the same exact design but it's round rather than squarish and it has this cutout which shaved off some more milligrams. Now from this duration test I can derive the lifetime of this actuator based on speed. I do recommend to keep the speed under 10 Hz for now because I don't have the exact value for higher speed applications because none of the actuators actually died. But hopefully in the future I can find a way to accelerate this lifetime testing. Now what are the applications for this actuator? I think I think the coolest one is kinetic sculptures. This is now plug and play so it's simple and has a thin form factor which makes it ideal for such an application. The first flexar flap was a testimonial for this because there's a lot of artists and engineers using it to combine art with tech. This kit will also include double sided tape which makes it much easier to customize. Now personally I want to use this for robotic applications and potentially a low resolution POV display. There is space to pass two more tracks from these arms so technically you can light up some LEDs. But that is a topic for another video. I hope I didn't bore you to that in this one but this research is going to be very important for some of my future projects. So if you're into this kind of stuff make sure you subscribe. See you in the next one guys bye bye.